Oh, hey guys, it's time to build an LM3886 audio amplifier. This is very popular in the do-it-yourself community. The chip has very good distortion performance, gives you a decent amount of power, and uh, not too difficult to use it either. Pretty simple amplifier to build. And just looking through the data sheet here. Lots of specifications, lots of curves on the distortion performance. And look at that. Four ohm loads are a little harder to drive than eight. But look at that distortion performance. Much of the spectrum, audio spectrum, it's below 0 0.01 up here it goes a little higher but it's still I mean it's like what 0 0.03 or something of course the first harmonic would be above hearing anyway so you know it's very very good performance tons of curves they really specified the thing and intermodulation distortion is complete non-issue. It's really non-issue with IC amplifiers anyway, but intermodulation distortion is way down in the point zero zero something range, almost scraping the bottom, almost going below point zero zero one here. You know, it goes way down. Just a very, very good chip. Well, it comes in two package types. These, by the way, are not LM3886, but it's the same 11-pin staggered lead package. This is isolated. This is non-isolated tab. I would gravitate towards this one if you're really going to push the chip because it's better thermal conductivity gets the heat away from the die inside there better than this type. One problem is if I'm going to use this perf board it doesn't fit on straight because of the, uh, the spacing of the leads but it does fit in at an angle like this. So I sat down with the graph paper and laid out a board. Laid out you know, all the components and everything. I could take a big enough board and just cut it diagonally to make an actually square board and if I was going to build an amplifier I would do that or just etch a board. And you can use the same layout for etching as well. Um, very important you know, if you're going to get those really nice low distortion figures you gotta lay your board out well. And I think I did a pretty decent job here. I uh, I got the supply decoupling pretty close to the chip and I'm keeping the ground separated or the uh, power grounds and the signal ground separated. So I have the ground running over here and for the signal ground it comes over here and of course that's away from all of this twist the leads and all that good stuff and you should have a pretty good amplifier okay I'll get this thing assembled here and we'll see what it sounds like okay pre-soldered I think I have everything right but uh, <laughs> find out when I test it out Okay, almost complete. Not too shitty. I still need to put a heat sink on it. Now, if you're wondering why I run the wires through holes in the board, that's for strain relief. Come on, focus. I'm not going to put this in any sort of case. 
So, you know, with the wires getting moved around, flopped around, I don't want them to break off at the solder point. So I, that's why I run them through the holes. All right. Well, before I put this on a heat sink, I'm going to test it out. I'll just clamp something on it because if I have to do rework, I don't want to have to remove a heat sink. Injury. This is not a safe hobby. Okay. I clampulated a heat sink onto it, slathered up some compound. Not in that order, but it's on there. And I'm using this to connect it to my power supply. First time, always put some sort of current limiting. You don't want to blow up your circuit if you have something connected wrong. This power supply is limited to one amp per channel. And we're in dual supply mode. So uh, being current limited, we're not going to have any problems here. So let's see what happens. I don't know if this thing will work or not. First time. I'll just bring the voltage up a little bit and check the. There's the voltage. And go up higher than that. And eh, pretty much no current being drawn. Now this chip will not come on until you hit like 18 volts or so. So I'll bring it up. Ah, hear that? I'll touch the input. Woo, I think it's working. I don't know if you can hear that chirping sound, but Every amplifier here picks up a weird chirping sound. I don't know what that comes from. But it's certainly something causing that. Well, that is a good sign. Let's go ahead and hook it up to some music and do kind of a demo. Okay, I have some music hooked up. And I did forget to mention... If the power supply leads are away from the main filter caps, for example, like these, I'd say 15 centimeters from the main filter caps, you probably should think about adding some electrolytic capacitors onto the board near to the chip. If you don't, you could possibly have st stability issues. But uh, I am obviously not biting by my rule there, but uh, it should be okay for this test. And I have this speaker over here connected. I did turn my camera sound down, so hopefully it picks the bass up better. That's why I seem quieter than before. Let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, sounds pretty good. I don't know if the bass comes over very good or not, but... That's just some Jamendo, you know, Jamendo website uh, music I downloaded, ambient stuff. I want to see if you guys know what this is from. Hang on a sec.
Well, if you know what that was from, uh, leave a comment. 550 tickets in front. Obviously a while ago, because uh, you can't get concert tickets that cheap these days. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, hook this thing up to a bigger heat sink and uh, grab the bigger power supply down here, big transformer, and uh, do a quick power measurement. Okay, much better. I have the heat sink on there now. My gator clipped this jury rigged power supply together. And uh, got it connected to the scope, 8 ohm load. On the uh, variac here. Lights flickered when I turned it on. Let's see here. see 73 volts 73.8 no load when I turn the amp on it pulls it down to about 65 volts I'm getting a little mess on the bottom of the sine wave that's probably because of the crappy power supply we'll make that go away 20.5 volts let's see how many watts we're getting Okay, probably getting a glare on the screen, but uh, 20.5, we square that, divided by 8, and we're getting 52 and a half watts. Well, certainly I could go much higher, but with this transformer on the Variac all the way cranked up to probably 10% over line voltage. That's as high as I can get. Now if I had a supply that could put you know um, a plus and minus 35 volts in, into it I could get a you know, much higher output. But you know that's clean power before clipping and not too bad. Well, that was fun, building this little amp, measuring it and testing it and all that good stuff. Let's do a little YouTube challenge. How about you guys that watch my channel, if you haven't ever made an amp before, why don't you build one? Start out easy, just build a LM386, maybe make a video of it. That will be my challenge for you guys build an audio amplifier if you haven't done it before well that's it thanks for watching